It's a change. Yeah, it is. And what I most liked about the three games, and especially the one over Everton, is isn't it great to see a team that looks like it's having fun? So often watching Wolves in the last few seasons, even when they've been winning, everybody's been a bag of nerves against Everton. The players look as though they're having the time of their life. Exactly. And you can see that when a team's confident, they're really loving it. They're, they're loving their football. It's the, the one thing that footballers want to do with... They're very blessed. I was very blessed to be a, a professional footballer and do what I love to do, as well as getting paid for it. Bit like you, Mike. You well, love what yes. you're doing. <laughs> so, I get paid for this. <laughs> but um, I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah but but it's great. It's great to see that, that there isn't that little bit of uh, nervousness about making a mistake. Yeah, if you make, that's par for the course. But you can see that the team help each other as well. Well, we're away. The uh, FA Cup third round weekend on BBC Radio WM begins here in Brentford. Brentford against Wolves. Wolves are playing in their third choice. Uh, I looked up the colour on the website and it says blue and white. I was looking for something more creative than that. Teal or turquoise or something. But anyway, it's yeah. officially blue and white um, that they're playing in tonight. Brentford are in red and white striped shirts and Brentford are going to have an early free kick in midfield. Uh, which gives me a moment to tell you that the Wolves team tonight then, just to confirm, it's Sar in goal, Kilman, Santiago Bueno and uh, Go uh, Totti are the back three, Samedo and Doherty wing-backs, Gomez and Doyle in midfield, Sarabia, Belgard and Cunha up front, and I'm interested to see the combinations that they'll be in um, when it uh, begins to develop. The delays because Neil Mopay, who is starting up front for Brentford tonight, has taken a bang on the head in that uh, incident that's given Brentford a free kick. He takes a moment to get up. So uh, we'll look at the Brentford team in a few moments. There was quite a bit of discussion as to what their formation would be here. Expecting them eventually to be with the same back three. But for the moment, they have the first attacking set piece of the match after just one minute. It's to the left-hand side for Brentford as they attack the Wolves end to our right. And we'll teed up by... Keen Potter out to the left and now chipped into the penalty area came deep through the box and Saar might have thought about coming for that decided to leave it Totti Gomez has dealt with it in so far as he's lashed a clearance high in the air comes down on the near side to us the Wolves left and Doherty sees it safely for now out for a Brentford throw uh, Brentford uh, Thomas Strakosha is the goalkeeper as they throw it quickly down the right side and it comes in to play it out again Zanka, who took the throw, says it never came in at all, but the linesman rules against him. So Thomas Strakosha is their goalkeeper. Nathan Collins, Ethan Pinnock and Zanka, the expected back three. Mikhail Damsgaard and Mad Roslev as wing backs. Josh De Silva, Christian Norgaard and Matthias Jensen in midfield. Keen Lewis Potter and Neil Mopay up front. The strongest available team, underlying the word available for Thomas Frank, who's got a lot of injuries to deal with. Cunha carries the ball forward for Wolves as they try and build their first attack on their right. And they check up and go back to Kilman, who's playing as the right-sided of three centre-backs tonight in his usual position, with Santiago Bueno to his left, replacing Dawson. Doyle now spreads it to the right and uses Sarabia. Out to the touchline and Samedo. Wolves starting to get their passing uh, game moving for the first time in the Brentford half. Doyle back out to the right touchline. A little bit of a hurry-up given to uh, Sarabia. But he gets it away in his usual silky fashion. Back to Santiago Bueno. Now Totti playing a pass down the left. Slid there for Belgar to run across in front of his defender Pinnock. And trying to drag him out of position. Pinnock makes a good challenge in the right back corner. And wins the ball back for Brentford. But nice to see Jean-Ric de Belgard looking nice and sharp. Exactly what I was going to say, Mike. Uh, Pinnock, Pinnock, great piece of defending. I, I'll rate him. He's a good defender, uh, Pinnock. And... Um, but Belgard, the way that he took it with his back to goal and then took, took, it, took it on, he just failed to just nick it past Pinnock and Pinnock got a good tackle in, but uh, he did look very sharp there, Belgard. He did. Uh, this is BBC Radio WM on 95.6 FM, DAB Digital Radio, Freeview Channel 722, and for this weekend, uh, live online as well on BBC Sounds and BBC Sport website in the UK. So uh, uh, wherever you are uh, around the UK this weekend, you can listen to uh, FA Cup commentaries from BBC Radio WM. Uh, the ball back with the Brentford goalkeeper Strakosha and they're looking for short passes out of the penalty area Wolves are pressing that he finds relief over on the left hand side with Lewis Potter 
And now it's played forward to Mope to hold it up on the halfway line. Efficiently backed by Jensen, the stylish Danish midfielder. And back to Nathan Collins, who has lined up to the left of the centre-backs. With Pinnock to his right and Zanka further right. Now Jensen being hurried up by Joao Gomez. And already it feels like it's a little bit of a high-risk strategy from Brentford to try and keep possession. But they've moved it to halfway and Zanka. Now forward on the right to Dansgaard. Pulls his uh, pass infield behind the run of Roslev. And it's tidied up by Santiago Bueno nice and efficiently. And back to his goalkeeper. But Wolves are quite keen to press. Now they might be being pressed themselves as Jose Saar also tries to keep possession rather than lash it downfield. Santiago Bueno in the edge of his penalty area. Ball played forward on the right by Semedo. Important foot in there by Gomez. Got the ball moving, but Sarabia couldn't quite keep it in play. And it's a throw on the far side. Five minutes, nil-nil. What's a slick passing being tried here? Yeah, but both sides are trying to impose themselves on, on, their, on the opposition. And um, there's some good passing by both sides. Uh, they're not afraid. They're not afraid to pass the ball when it gets in their in, in their own penalty areas. Even the goalkeepers. Yeah, Doyle just tried what looked like quite a high risk pass near the edge of his own penalty area, but he knew Doherty was there for it. And players are more prepared to walk a bit of a tightrope with that than they used. Well, I think they're encouraged. The manager, the manager's given them the the liberty to do that and the freedom to express themselves, and they trust them. And the thing is, they can trust them far more on the on the the surfaces that the, the lads play on now are, are totally different to what they were just even just a few years ago the, the advances in the technology oh, Wolves, Wolves have got a great chance here and Cunio threw oh. against the goalkeeper and the ball knocked loose by a defender and it flew just over the bar after the uh, touch from Zanka but that was the pressing that Wolves made and they forced the errors in the game here before Strakosha caught out this time yeah, as we said, the 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 keepers keepers got caught out. Cunha's picked it up and nearly went round him, but then the uh, recovering defender, I think it is Zankin, has knocked yeah. it knocked it over for a corner. He did well to recover that though. Strakosha uh, stood up uh, strongly when Cunha was running at him. Here's the first corner lifted in from the Wolves' right and high was uh, Collins there to head it away, and the uh, whistle blows for a push by. A Wolves player right in front of the goalkeeper, so it's going to be a free kick to Brentford. But, I mean, Brentford got themselves into a pickle several times in the game here uh, the, the other week when Wolves picked... Well, Huang, wasn't it? He was uh, chief pickpocket for Wolves yeah. who, uh, who'd stole in, and they're walking the, uh, the very same narrow path again there with Strakhan. Well, this, yeah, this time it was um, Cunha who... Uh, who intercepted the pass from the, from the goalkeeper but he, looking at it again we've got the benefit of a screen in front of us um, it was a very poor very full pass it didn't take much much intercepting put it that way the referee Tony Harrington just held play up for a moment then so I assume that the the video team were looking at something but whatever it was uh, it's gone qu uh, past quickly Tony Harrington is the man in the centre but that only scratches the surface of the uh, refereeing uh, uh, team tonight now there's a foul there by Joao Gomez uh, trying to stretch for the ball just inside the Brentford half and the referee marched over quickly there as if he thinks he ought to be taking a bit more action and the Brentford player who's landed heavily is Norgard we're going to see a replay now Gomez was stretching the ball he's been sent off he's been sent off by the referee Harrington on the field after just eight minutes the red card was waved there and Gomez, what? I think he's going to be going here. Well, we, we've got the opportunity to see that again. But uh, yeah. Presumably the VAR officials will get involved too. Uh, what on earth? I mean, that you, uh, I'd rather not comment till I see it again, yeah. Mike. But, um, just to clarify, we, what, we, just is, to clarify yeah. what, what, well. what on earth went on there. Obviously, he's stretching for it and the whatever. But he didn't look as though he, he's, he's launched himself. We've seen some some tackles and, and challenges that have been really out of order but that didn't look at that didn't look it my gut feeling says it yeah. didn't look as though it was a, a sending off offense well there was one but I, I, I haven't in, seen yeah, i haven't seen a game, replay yet. in the cup tie last night the crystal palace game uh and everton where um uh calvert lewin was sent off wasn't he but uh 
and that was contentious. Uh, I have to say that a stretcher has now appeared for Norgard. So um, let's hope that his well, I'll, injury well, I'll, isn't I'll too Norgard's bad. Okay. That he's going to be okay. And oh, he was caught on the ankle by Gomez, who was stretching for it, and it might be that whatever the we feel that the extent of the foul was that it's damaged Norgard's ankle although he's been well he's lifted up but I don't think he's well, going to be carrying on Norgard so that doesn't necessarily affect whether we think it how bad I think we uh, the tackle is whether it is the, an injury the, or not but there is an injury what 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 happens to the what happens to the the player that's been tackled it should be totally irrelevant because the thing is somebody can have an innocuous tackle that's a fair tackle yeah. and get injured is that does that say oh, sorry we've got to wait to see what the in, what how bad yeah. the injury is before I decide if I'm going to give you a card well it's, yeah. it should be on and I don't say, I didn't see any malice in it he's, put, he's, he's, he's very competitive Gomez he wins a lot of challenges he wins a lot of tackles okay the 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 Brentford player just got there before, but that's 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 a yellow card at the most for me, and that that would be fi fine. But I, I, he spoiled the game now, the referee for me. Well, he uh, the the uh, dismissal's been done. Joao Gomez look, uh, stood at the side of the pitch for a moment while uh, presumably there was he was waiting to see if there was a video check. But if there was. Then uh, he, uh, then it was quickly done, and he's gone. And it will be uh, pending. Obviously, Wolves will have the right to appeal it, but it will be a three-match suspension for Joao Gomez, which Wolves did not need. Um, the suspensions. If there's a red card in a cup game, that does carry to Premier League games. So he will miss the uh, the next three Premier League games as it stands, pending whether or not Wolves choose to appeal. For now, though, they're playing with ten for the rest of this game, and uh, we're only in the twelfth minute. And forward on the left come Brentford, trying to take advantage of that. They have introduced Vitaly Janelt as a substitute for the injured Norgard. He is across from Lewis Potter, and it's headed away uh, near the uh, six-yard box by Santiago Bueno. But, well, we got, we're going to have plenty of time later on to reflect on the, the decision and whether it was right or not. What Wolves have got to do is play the game as it stands now, which is they're going to play a long time with the Manchu. Of course, of course they have. They've got to, I've, I've mentioned the world beat. You know, professional before, and yeah. uh, they've got Wolves have to be professional, and they they have to they have to do what they need to do and uh, set themselves up. I know that um, there were instructions went onto the pitch. I saw Matt Doherty come off and speak to the uh, to O'Neill to say, right, how are we going to set up? And um, it's going to be It's as I say, it's going to be interesting. Um, but Wolves have got to do their best with uh, with ten men. They have. So Gomez dismissed after nine minutes, and here is the free kick to be taken by Totti, just short of halfway, who lifts it high down the centre, probably too far for Mateus Cunha, headed away by Pinnock, and nodded down uh, now by Mope, short of halfway, and back they go to Nathan Collins, who had a desperate evening here against Wolves a little over a week ago but gets the chance to atone for it in this game forward come Brentford to halfway with Zanka uh, and his path is he's blocked by Belgard back out to Zanka on the right and Doyle this time sliding it in midfield to divert that pass out for a throw Sarabia's pulled into a more central position for the moment you can certainly see that uh, here from the throw is a chance to run on the right side for De Silva restored after injury to the Brentford team and he a trick Slips the ball through to Roslev. He's crossed from near the corner flag. He's nodded away from the six-yard line by Bueno. Comes back to De Silva. Out to the right again and Mads Roslev. And a short pass to the edge of the penalty area. Quickly moved on by Damsgaard. And set back for a shot that's just over the bar from Nathan Collins. They're appealing that it should be a corner. It's a goal kick's been given by the referee Harrington. But Collins caught it sweetly but just couldn't quite keep it down. No, he couldn't. Um, Brentford were very, very patient. They didn't. Uh, they didn't get in, into the box for no reason. They just kept passing and passing with their ex, with their man extra to find somebody who could uh, have a shot from the edge of the box. And Collins, from probably 20 yards out, just didn't get over it enough to uh, to test Sar. 
15th minute, Brentford nil, Wolves nil in the third round of the FA Cup. But if you've uh, joined us uh, a little bit late, remember it was an early kickoff at 7:15 compared to a normal evening game. Wolves have already had Joao Gomez sent off, so they're playing the majority of this game with 10 men and it's perhaps just as well that after this match they will be without a game for two weeks they're going off to uh, Dubai I think it is for a, a, a training camp because they're going to get through a lot of running in the next 80 minutes the fellas who are out there uh, here comes Brentford with Jensen moving it to the left Keane Potter running at the corner of the penalty area held up by Semedo who takes the ball from him and now he's faced with the problem of running back towards the byline with it but releases it out to the left touchline for a throw to oh, it's a throw to Wolves in fact yeah I think it just just clipped what the um, Brentford player on its way out Mike I didn't see it it's obviously um, yeah. very very slight little uh, little touch but it's uh, a Wolves throw it's a Wolves throw and we're going to see we're going to have to see a different side to Wolves, really, than we've seen the re in the last three games. We're going to see a test of their defensive discipline. Well, they've got to they've got to stay disciplined. Um, the way that Brentford play as well that we'd already seen with eleven v eleven is they're going to be confident on the ball. So I think that um, possession wise, Brentford are going to be in the ascendancy. But Wolves have got to look to it on the counter attack. Simple as that. And played across towards the right side for Brentford near the edge of the penalty area and Doherty wins a good header but it's quickly coming back from Zanka to De Silva on the Brentford right slips a pass in field there's a bit of space and it's worked out to the right for Roslev trying to hook the bouncing ball into the centre Wolves there in numbers Totti Gomez away comes back to Zanka midway inside the Wolves half 16 minutes Brentford nil 10 man Wolves nil is De Silva moving in from the right touchline trying to glide away from Tommy Doyle who stayed with him back out to Zanka to the right side Belgard covers the crossing angle so he goes further wide to Mikel Damsgaard and Damsgaard edging his way towards the corner of the penalty area slips a pass forward to De Silva and to Roslev and Zanka and now he swings a cross in and it's towards Mopai and it's very well defended by Kilman who nipped in yeah. front of Mopai and just yeah, it knocks the ball away the uh, Wolves skipper read it very, very well. Saw what was happening, then and just stepped in front of Mopai just as the ball was coming in, and it, and dealt with it very easily. But he, if you let it go into Mopai in that situation when he's between the six-yard box and the, and the penalty spot with his back to goal, it can cause you all kinds of problems. Yes, because he is so quick at moving into yep. those little gaps, and so Kilman had to be really sharp to get to that. Now yep. there's a chance for Wolves to break out, and Tomato won a good ball on halfway, got there before Lewis Potter, and plays it out to Cunha, who crashes into a defender as he want a corner yes he has well that's that's the other thing in that um, it, big Max Kilman Totti we've seen score from corners Kilman um, we haven't got Dawson but Santiago's um, decent in the air as well so this this will be a re it, it's one of the avenues where Wolves can actually hurt Brentford they're not going to hurt them too much in open play apart from the um, the counter attack which we just saw led by Cunha and they do have the pace that will but, remain a but, weapon even with 10 and men Sarab yeah. Sarabia's uh, left foot his, his, his service is ex usually excellent he, he goes goes beyond the far post this time Kilman's making a run there heads it towards the near post and now trying to battle his way through the scrum what's the linesman giving he's giving offside so that was a disappointment yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he seemed to be pondering whether he was going to give another corner or not yeah. But it's offside. Kilman got it very well for that in the first place. I have to say, it wasn't immediately apparent where the offside was, but anyway. Uh, there was, there, well, there wasn't one. That's, I've just seen it again. That's yes. ridiculous. Well, forward come uh, Brentford in response, but Kilman's there again to block King Potter's pass into Mopay. And a clearance down the right. Cunha is... He is going to make sure that the Brentford back three don't take any liberties. Well, C Cunha is... Cunha's, um, really good athlete um, I've said that before he, he does everything He's, he carries the ball very well he, he, he runs behind very well um, you can't take an, he, he can the thing is with Cunha even with two, three, four players round him he can go past a lot of them um, okay. he's capable of doing that 
Ruslev slalomed in field, but he gave it to Jensen. He's played it back out to the right side, and Matt Doherty makes a very well-timed tackle on Josh De Silva, who started yeah. on the right and been quite a handful. Yeah, De Silva started off quite quite well for for Brentford. He's looked uh, he's looked to danger. He's looked co very comfortable on the ball, Mike. And uh, Doherty kept his eye on the ball. So it's a first Brentford corner of the game in uh, the 20th minute. Brentford nil, Wolves nil. And a corner on the right with Jensen standing over it. Keen Potter's offered a short option, so too is Damsgaard. And Jensen plays it short for his fellow Dane Damsgaard. Now back to Roeslev, who stands it up beyond the far post. And Saar thought about coming and didn't. Finnick hooked it back towards goal. And Saar clawed it away from near the corner of post and bar. And uh, had it under control, but it was close. Yeah, there was a slight bit of hesitation or yeah. doubt what, what was going to happen, but um, Saar quickly uh, grasped the ball into him and uh, settled everybody's nerves. Passed back into his own penalty area by Doherty to Doyle, showed great confidence in his collie, and Doyle dispatched it, seeing that there was no pass on, at least got it away up to the halfway line. Yeah, that, well, sometimes you've got to be, you've got to, as we were told, you Put your, sometimes if you're in, in your own penalty area and everything, it's, it's no disgrace in just putting your foot through the ball and clearing no. the danger. Especially not when you're a man short. Uh, exactly. 21 minutes at the Brentford Community Stadium. Brentford nil, Wolves nil. Wolves reduced by one with the dismissal of Joao Gomez in just nine minutes for his challenge on Christian Norgard, who then left the field injured a few moments after. Here's Dunsgaard playing the ball to... Vitaly Janelt, the substitute who replaced the injured Norgard. Now on to De Silva, who's running in again diagonally from the right. Doyle shadowing him, plays it across for Collins. Brentford with everybody pushing forward towards the Wolves penalty area. Mope peels away from the front, takes a touch. Gives it to Janelt, who chips in his cross, looking for the far post and headed back across into the centre by Damsgaard. Couldn't find another red and white shirt. The ball is looped back in towards Mope. And Santiago Bueno was touch tight to him. Won't let Mope get clear. Semedo's looking to bring the ball away, but it's very cleverly played against him by Collins, who wants to take a quick throw and does. Too quick, because Belgard reads where it's going. And he releases the pass down the right touchline. It stays in play. Collins takes uh, a pass down the left to Jensen, who wins a throw, and Brentford are trying to turn up the pace a little bit now. Yeah, they're very busy, aren't they? They... But the ball goes out for a throw-in, they're getting it quickly, throwing it very quickly, uh, trying to take advantage of this um, Wolves down to 10 men. And De Silva forward on the right and trying to work a 1-2 with Damsgaard. It was blocked on its way through by Totti, but it's come back to Damsgaard, who's turning one way and then the other, and now releasing it to Roslev on the byline, and almost an own goal by Totti, sliced it across the six-yard box, wide of Saar and wide beyond the far post. Jensen tried to put it back in, and Wolves have cleared it. Yeah, I think uh, everybody of a Wolves persuasion would have had their hearts in their mouth then, because uh, it, it skidded across the... Jose Sars line and um, went out the far side and then nearly came back again um, well I think Totti Wolves, thought he'd got to get something on it yeah. and take his well, chance what are we well, going at, on? at the end of the day it's yeah. worked out for him referee told them to hang on with the corner so again I, uh, no, I don't not know what sure I didn't, I didn't see anything no. that, 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 no. that needed to be looked at but um, anyway it's a corner for Brentford yeah and they've taken it now and here it comes bent in towards uh, the edge of the six yard box and Doherty with a commanding header away in the centre the silver will return it all the way back to halfway and Strakosha I say all the way because Brentford had every outfield player forward and Strakosha from the centre circle playing it to his left the uh, Brentford goalkeeper and, ob and obviously with Wolves down to 10 men, Mike, it's up that they've, they've retreated 30 to 40 yards back into their own half. They're not even presenting any challenge to, uh, to Brentford's possession of the ball until they get halfway into yeah. Wolves' half. Yeah, they still retain that deterrent of the pace. Yeah. Now, there's a Wolves player down on the far side and the referee has stopped the game because Doyle has been fouled. And uh, you can, well, the Wolves fans are saying what they think on the far side. Damsgaard was the Brentford player who made the challenge, and I think the referee might refer this. 
Um, Brentford wanted to take a quick throw, but uh, the referee, I think, if he's asked for a second opinion, and I think he might have done, um, if that was us, you'd send him off, said the Wolves fans. But um, yes, I, you... are, we, are, we carry, are we okay to carry on there? Um, or are we still waiting for PlayStation uh, Zero to buzz into the ref's ear? No, we're all right. Um, so it's a throw on the left for Brentford. And it slid forward from halfway by Pinnock out towards the left and Jensen. And on the stretch, Mopai's diverted it towards Josh De Silva. But it was very strongly defended there by Wolves. And De Silva was never really able to get his balance while he had the ball. And Wolves battle their way up towards halfway. And here's Belgard, but he's outnumbered. And Brentford move it back. Uh, Belgard uh, almost caught Collins there, who went gambling out of the way of the, cha the tackle. And Brentford have the ball over to the right with Matthias Jorgensen, better known as Zanka, prefers to go by the one name. Another Danish international in a very heavily Danish-infused squad, like their manager Thomas Frank. De Silva to the corner of the penalty area. Ruslev out to the right and thinks about a cross, goes back to Zanka and back to Pinnock. And this is very much the established pattern of this game. Wall still re retain that deterrent of... Cunha and Belgard's pace if they get it clear but now a cross finally arrives and Saar was watching it all the way punched it clear Doyle with the uh, up and under to see if it'll fall the way of Belgard but it doesn't and drifts out to the near side it tested yeah. Brentford's patience a bit as well this won't it yeah well that, 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 they'll have to keep patient because they know that if um, if they if they're not at it they know that uh, Cunha and Belgard mm. can uh, can find them out if they can get Sarabia in there prompting them um, Wolves have got opportunities and if they can get up the pitch um, free kicks and corners yeah. you know well, they can get their centre backs up and cause problems they can De Silva working a pass across to Jensen who had Belgard interfering with him all the way then and Jensen was never going to get that and now Cunha has been pulled back by Zanka and that's a certain yellow card well that's a definite yellow card it is and there it is um, for Zanka because well it's, they know the threat that comes from Cunha and with so many Brentford players pushed forward I'm not sure why yeah. all the Brentford players are all around all around the referee Mike I just can't see it mate yeah I mean I, I mean I think that's just what they do isn't it these well but, but, but they, yeah they, I know what you mean yes you're they, right they, they do but that's how, that if I was a referee that would only <laughs> infuriate me more and yeah. it wouldn't it wouldn't uh, put Brentford in my good books put it that no. way uh, it's tipping it down here in the last uh, few minutes as if the south of England well if anywhere in England frankly needs any more rain at the moment coming down the motorway Oxfordshire looked like it sunk um, but it's raining quite steadily now again here in Brentford as Wolves hit a free kick out to the left and I think they're offside so it's going to be a Brentford ball and a few tempers are being lost on the near touchline Thomas Frank who has not had an awful lot of things go his way lately Brentford have been on their poorest run mm. since promotion to the Premier League and uh, they've seen them drift back towards trouble he's got loads of players out injured and he's beginning to lose it a bit at something as he sees his well, team move forward again and a tame cross in from the left from Lewis Potter he's gathered up by Saar and Wolves are trying to get Cunha away and he's got to halfway with red and white shirts chasing him and now he plays a teasing pass for Sarabia to get after and the goalkeeper's done well to get out early well it just, show, it just shows that um, Wolves got, have got options obviously the, the number one man is Cunha because yeah. he's, um, his ability to, to get the ball and go past people is excellent bit like Adam Atriori at his, at his best and um, you know it is a real outlet Sarabia is a little bit of a turn of speed as well yeah. he, he, he uses so, it judiciously only a yeah. he, he can can get, get going Belgard Belgard, Belgard's very sharp as well so they do carry a threat yeah. on, the, on the break and with Brentford pushing so many men forward that it's, it equalises things suddenly when uh, Cunha's up against only one but for the moment Wolves are back in their defensive pattern and in the 29th minute, it's still Brentford nil Wolves nil. And here's Lewis Potter, the young uh, forward playing out on the left wing mainly tonight with Mopai operating as the central man on his own. Now they've edged it back to Collins and Wolves are uh, settling in and waiting for a pass to go astray. And Doherty gets his foot on the ball 
but it's back with De Silva and De Silva to Zanka out to Roslev to the right Doherty's sticking close to him preventing the cross they haven't let Roslev get many crosses in from the right and he, he's a good crosser from there they're not giving him the angle short pass from Jensen into the edge of the penalty area well controlled by Damsgaard Lewis Potter lifting across two defenders went up with De Silva and they had a little bit of a lucky break there Totti Gomez got a bit of that and sort of headed it against De Silva and it popped up for Saar yeah, they, they give the Wolves, Wolves defenders credit, uh, Mike. I think they just crowded him out a little they bit, did. Yes, and uh, so that he could, he just couldn't get a clean header, and then it just bobbled down, and Saar just uh, gobbled it up. But yes. um, it was good defending from the Wolves. You'd rather two guys go for it than nobody goes for it. Yeah, um, one jumped in front so that the lad couldn't come and and go, go into it, and then he couldn't step backwards and come onto it again because Totty was behind him. Uh, so they sandwiched him really in the right no foul no. I'm just saying in a, in a good way good 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 defending uh, no goals at Brentford and we've had uh, half an hour and uh, the rain's starting to seep in we've got a little windscreen here which I tested it last time when we came in I, the other week I it was tipping down as well but you can't really see through it if it's raining <laughs> so yeah it's it, it's it, it's modestly helpful but um, it's already struggling to uh, to really do the job anyway forward comes to Silva on the right uh, for Brentford gets a pass from Zanka and they shuffle it about between them for a bit Wolves are protecting Jose Saar pretty well because they've now been playing with 10 men for 20 minutes and he hasn't really made a save yet out to the left goes Luis Potter now Jensen furthest forward he's been and he's seen off by Sarabia who wins the ball and Jensen tumbles over and he finds Belgard and Belgard's got Samedo running ahead of him to the right. Belgard is uh, stepping in field, a bit of a zigzag path. Took him to Doyle, Doyle to Totti. She's very confident from Walls. Totti over halfway to Doherty. Back to Totti. Now they've got a decent starting position. Back to Santiago Bueno. I like this. Yeah, well, the thing is, Walls have got to be confident to play their own game when they get the opportunity. OK, they haven't got uh, an, an extra man, but when you've got players of the, the quality of Cunha, Sarabia, Belgard, they can take, they can take two or three um, Brentf Brentford players out of the game in one run, either with or without the ball, and that's the key. And they've just got to keep probing and be patient because they won't get as many opportunities on the ball as Brentford are obviously having. Long diagonal pass down the left, but that goes astray. So uh, it is out for a Brentford throw inside their own half and it stays nil nil and we're up to 32 minutes it's going to be a long way for Wolves to hold out with only 10 men uh, having had uh, Gomez sent off within the first 10 but so far they are standing firm and here's De Silva who's looked as awkward a customer as anybody uh, for Wolves so far to deal with moving in from the right touchline links with Yan out now runs at Totti has to step away from him. Doyle now stops him. Plays a pass into the penalty area. Mopay has a shot blocked. And Jensen completely slices it when it comes back to him. And he'll be very disappointed. He's quite a cultured player, Matthias Jensen. But he had a big wahoo at that. It went right across the laces and away. Well, yeah, fortunately for Wolves, um, he did go for a, for a goal kick. But De um, Silva, Mike, uh, I'll just echo what you're saying about him. He's, he's, he's the main man for, for Brentford. He's let, lovely left foot, good balance um, on the right hand side up front, and uh, he's causing all kinds of problems down the the, ne the nearest uh, nearest side to where we're uh, we're mm. commentating from. Well, it's his first start of the season. He's been troubled by hamstring problems, and he's one of a number of players that Brentford have missed. They've lost their last five in the Premier League, including against Wolves, of course. Damsgaard it looks as though he got a hand of, handful of Belgard shirt there, but Belgard keeps going all the same, and he's linked up well with Doherty on the left, and the referee's happy to let play go on because Wolves are starting to crackle some passes around nicely, and he lets them get on with it, and Sarabia looking out to the left. Oh, there's nobody there. Well, I'm not there sure. Breaks down. I'm yeah. not. Well, he's obviously there's mixed messages going on because he thought somebody was going there, nobody did, and the ball went into a place where there wasn't a Wolves player within 20 or 30 yards so uh, they got it completely wrong on that occasion but I liked that uh, the last two or three minutes we've seen Wolves come but out of their shell and play a bit they're looking to be positive when they can yeah 
Now there's a long punt down the Brentford right. They're trying that, and it skids on after what is now a very slick surface. Yeah, and, Matt, and uh, it goes away Matt, from Matt Doherty. He's um, shattered it away from the silver, and um, good defending from the dock. Yeah, he's been very, very good so far, coming in from the left uh, wing position. But he's stuck to any Brentford player that's come near him with the ball. Hasn't given anybody any room. Matt Doherty was having to. Uh, Spent most of his time on the bench since going back to Wolves this season, but uh, I, I th think there that, will be time where he that's plays. because of the good form of of, of Samedo and that's obviously Ain't Nuri uh, Bueno when he's uh, when he's had the left yeah. left back. But um, and I th we've heard the manager um, Gary O'Neill mention that on a few occasions that um, that Matt's he'd lo love Matt to have more time on the pitch as the, as the player would himself he but would. Uh, but it's a nice position to be he's got four competent but, fullbacks that but he that's, can the, that's the thing with a manager you know you, you've you got to it's good that players are knocking on your door or having a word and yeah. just expressing just making sure that, that, that the manager knows that they're they're not happy on the bench but a good manager, that's what he wants. Yeah, he absolutely. doesn't want people that are happy to sit on the bench. No, no. Well, over a, the ri a rigorous season, you're going to need them all sooner or later. That's yeah. Uh, here's Sarabia, away to the right. And uh, it, the ball is with uh, Belgar. That's just shows in our ear that the challenge on Doyle a few moments well, ago that had Doyle upset um, didn't look all that great. It was. So. I don't think either of them, if, if the first one and the Wolves fans picked it out because it's near them yeah. if, if that's if one's a sending off the other one is but I don't yeah. think that the first one's a sending off I think it's a, it's a, it's a yellow card because he's got it wrong mm. but it, I don't think it was he wasn't out of control he didn't fly through the air he didn't no. kung fu kick him did no he, he was low he was certainly yeah, low yeah that's what anyway. I mean anyway on we go um, there is uh, as I was saying earlier there is VAR in play tonight um, and there's an extra VAR official compared with the Premier League games which apparently is what FIFA do in their games so the VAR is Rebecca Welch the uh, what's I forgot what it was called now the support VAR <laughs> is, uh, is Jared Gillett who is there to, to help the VAR there's also an assistant VAR as well uh, who's the linesman now Doherty's down on this near side after a collision with Roslev who's being booked here Roslev he should be yeah yeah so that's he's, he's, he's intentionally just blocked took him out um, so, because Matt Doherty's played a clever little one-two Roslev understands that he, he's, his momentum is going forward and he can't get back in time so he's got to take he's got to block him off which is a straightforward yellow card well there's two now on this right side of the Brentford defence Zanka the right sided centre back and Roslev the wing back both on yellow cards now which the game being as it is will not have escaped the attention of Cunha and Belgard no and it is a free kick to Wolves and we're in the 37th minute of an increasingly damp first half in West London and it's Brentford nil Wolves now and here's Sarabia lifting the free kick in beyond the far post and a run being made by Totti and he gets there first but can't keep the header down it was from about 12 yards and he ran onto it full belt he might have been surprised that there was no defender with him but I think he had rather more time and space than he thought there Totti yeah he, for me for me he'd got to just go it back across the keeper into the yeah. far post and couldn't quite get it right but a great ball in I've mentioned the the cultured left foot of Sarabia and the de his delivery is absolutely excellent and it was on that occasion but um, unfortunately for Totti he couldn't quite um, direct the ball back across the keeper into the far, far bag completely caught Brentford out and uh, ball played out to the uh, right hand side and uh, back it comes to the byline and knocked forward by Cunha now up towards halfway and they lose it and the ball is with uh, on the right Zanka Zanka to Damsgaard and uh, Brentford have settled into their position once again here on the uh, just inside the Wolves half and now working it in field from uh, De Silva and De Silva shot pushed away by Saar first save he's really had to make but he was right behind it down low to his right and pushed away uh, De Silva's shot, he was hit left-footed. First time they've really given him a little bit of space, and uh, 
He had the shot on target, but Saar was right behind it. You would expect... Brent, look, Brentford are decent. They're very good here. Uh, Frank's had to put up with lots of um, injuries. Ve very uh, testing on his squad. They've not had some the results. So they, he's, they've, they've been under pressure, but they've carried on uh, playing their game and stuck to their principles. And, you know... Six to go to half time. There's a foul here by and all Sarabia. And credit, all yeah. credit to him, Mike. Yeah, indeed. Uh, foul by Sarabia was outside the penalty area as uh, Jensen was trying to work his way through to put a cross in. Jensen is... Uh, the Wolves fans are right in that corner and they're not great fans of Jensen at the moment. They had a quite a good look of Jensen's challenge on Doyle, which uh, did not receive further punishment but might have done. Um, and they didn't really appreciate the way he went down under Sarabia's challenge, although... He well, Sar Sarabia didn't follow through with the challenge. No. He, he, he's, he's looked as though he's going to lunge, but then he didn't. No, but uh, Jensen took off. And then Jensen's uh, anyway. gone down as if he's poleaxed. Mm. Anyway, it's a free kick to defend with five minutes to go in the first half. So, Wolves have flooded their own six-yard box with defenders. Sarabi is a one-man wall. Jensen bends it in and it cannons around the six-yard box after Collins got the first header and it smacked in. The rebound falls to Mopai and he's left-footed, half-volleyed finish. Gave Saar no chance and it's taken Brentford 40 minutes, 30 minutes against 10 men to finally break through. But Mopai, so sharp in the penalty area, has finished that one pretty adroitly and it's Brentford one walls now. Yeah, it was, um, it was a decent, but decent ball in put Wolves under tremendous pressure it's been bobbing around and then it's just dropped down and Mo you couldn't ask for anybody better from a Brentford perspective uh, Neil Mopay just put his foot through it and just he knew what he was doing he's guided it into the far post and uh, let's put Brentford one up but um, all credit to them they've got their break with Wolves going down to 10 men I would say it's very questionable but, but that's that's been the decision so you have to carry on and it's taken uh, over half, about a half an hour for um, Brentford to yeah. to take advantage of the yes it's a good finish by Mopay his third goal since his return to Brentford on loan from Everton he's had a, a pretty miserable time at Everton scored only once in 32 appearances which is way off his usual record did very good work both here and at Brighton uh, earlier in his career and uh, he dispatched that one neatly enough so now Wolves are gone down and a man down with three minutes to go in the first half getting plenty of vocal backing from their supporters by the way who are not fans of the referee as you can probably tell and Brentford picking the ball up again short of halfway and Damsgaard sliding a pass towards and then past the silver and Jose So would like it to roll on into the penalty area and it does just before Mopai arrives three minutes to go in the first half it's obviously difficult now for Wolves they're, they're not without hope in this game by any means but it is difficult well no well it's always going to be difficult if you're playing against a, re a decent team who, who uh, are good on the ball they're going to be decent 11 v 11 yeah but um all credit to Brentford they've been patient Wolves have played probably the tactics you would expect from a team with 10 men um, and they do they, they have caused Brentford a little bit of a problems on a couple of occasions without really testing the keeper the silver forward on the right checks up near the edge of the penalty area and plays it back for Damsgaard now in the centre circle here is Ethan Pinnock with two minutes and added time to go at the end of the first half and I imagine there'll be a bit of added time although the VAR around the red car didn't actually take all that long in the end um, forward it comes for De Silva who tries to wrong foot Cunha and moves into the penalty area that pass for Damsgaard is over hit though and out for a goal kick but he has been the key player in the first half Josh De Silva for Brentford yeah I agree with you Mike I think De Silva everything's come through De Silva on the um, Brentford's right hand side Wolves left um, and you couldn't you can't actually say that uh, the, the the people on Wolves left 
especially Matt Doherty and Totti, have had a bad game at all. No, no, I don't think so. You know, it's no. not, that's no reflection on them. It's just the fact that he's he has, uh, you know, had a really good game. He has. Uh, a free transfer from Arsenal as a youngster. So uh, you can imagine he'd been well schooled, but he's been uh, here now for a long time, was part of the team that uh, was promoted in 2001. In 2021, I should say, and uh, here come Brentford again on halfway with Pinnock, who was also in that promotion squad. Turned back to him by Damsgaard, now out to the left and Jensen. Just might just be able to hear boos on the breeze every time Jensen's on the ball from the uh, Wolves fans. They're a bit louder that time. Pinnock to the right and Zanka and Brentford happy to hold on to the ball and now De Silva steps around uh, Totti. And then checks up to face the same defender again, gives it to Damsgaard. Injection of pace out to Ruslev on the right. But again, he's very well covered by Doherty and Doyle this time. And Brentford have to go back to halfway where Nathan Collins carries the ball forward himself. Up towards the edge of the penalty area. Across from Jensen, Damsgaard finds the silver edge of the box. Looking for a shooting angle and goes back against Totti a second time. Ruslev crosses from the right, that's blocked. De Silva's still appealing for a penalty. But the referee's already looking elsewhere and Cunha's picked up the ball near the left touchline. And he's trying to barrel over the halfway line with it. It's knocked loose from him by Zanka. Minimum four minutes of added time at the end of the first half being indicated. And Cunha again still looks pretty slippery when he gets to the ball. Well, exactly. And I can't... I mean, I'd love to see that again, but I can't see how Cunha wasn't foul there, Mike. No, well, he looks like it might have been by Zanka. He certainly thought so. Well, I did as well. Yeah. Uh, Fulham won Rotherham nil in one of the other uh, Friday night ties. The FA Cup tie now, sort of, uh, the third round of the FA Cup goes on for longer than Christmas now, doesn't it? It started on Thursday, it'll still be going on Monday. Uh, but Fulham leading Rotherham 1 nil, not all that far from here. Pass played into the feet of Jensen, who thought he was fouled. Referee let play go on for a, another step, and then Mopai was tripped by Sarabia. So that's going to be a free kick. And Brentford will have another opportunity in added time at the end of the first half. Uh, the other uh, FA Cup tie being played tonight is another London game. It was also with a different kick-off time. It was an 8 o'clock start between Tottenham and Burnley. So uh, they're only just underway and that's goalless. But Fulham won Rotherham nil. They could over Reed and here Brentford won Wolves nil. Mopai. And a free kick to the right of centre for Brentford who are having a great committee meeting here there are six of them standing around the ball <laughs> referee says do you mind with a loud uh, blast on the whistle any time chaps and uh, De Silva pushes one of his colleagues in the chest Jan Eld as he was like aren't they are they actually disagreeing with it or is this just for show they, it's all turning to a bit a bit of a panto <laughs> De Silva and Jan Eld and finally they tap it to Jensen they, they overdid that routine a bit. Yeah, and I'm sure it was a training ground um, yes. little manoeuvre. I've seen plenty of those in my, in, in my time, and uh, they didn't fool anybody no. from the Wolves' side anyway. The ball's cleared to Lewis Potter as a go from outside the penalty area, and he pulls it wide. But, uh, yes, that one needs work. They hammed it up a bit too much. It was always yeah. pretending to be arguing on the ball. Yeah, it Nobody's was, buying uh, that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Watch the ball. I think they overact. I think it was overacting there. Yes. <laughs> not that any footballers have been accused of that before. <laughs> no, of course not. Mike. <laughs> Silly game, isn't it? Really? <laughs> Two and a half minutes to go. Uh, gone in added time at the end of the first half. Brentford one, Wolves nil. In our first live FA Cup tie out of five this weekend on BBC Radio WM. Three more tomorrow. Uh, Sarabia and. Uh, Cunha trying to link up, but Saravia's back heel runs just behind Cunha. Uh, tomorrow at three, we're uh, at uh, Hull against Blues. That'll be on DAB and Freeview. And Southampton against Walsall will be our FM commentary. Looking forward to that one. Middlesbrough against Villa at 5.30. And then on Sunday, Albion against Aldershot. He's a two o'clock start. And all those games, as well as being on the radio uh, across our various frequencies, will be available online through either BBC Sounds or the BBC Sport website, or both. Uh, out go Brentford to their left touchline, and uh, Collins, who at the moment will be enjoying his night a little bit more than he did when uh, 
He played against his old club last week. Forward it comes from Zanka to De Silva. And Doyle does well to step in there. He took the ball just out for a throw, but he did break up a promising Brentford move. And uh, he's, like he's, all his colleagues, he's got through a lot of work, Doyle, in this first half. He has, he has. He's done very well in the middle after losing his, uh, his partner. And that's half-time. G um, um, from the, the Wolves fans, but yeah, I mean, that's not, ne not necessarily what we'd associate with being Doyle's game, is putting his foot in. He's meant to be the creative guy, but he's, he's done, done very well. He's done, he's done really well. I mean, he, he's been doing well anyway, but especially uh, losing Gomez so early. Um, and that'll be the talking point, especially amongst the, the, the Wolves people, is have, um, have Wolves be, uh, got, got a, 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 been the receiving end of a poor decision. But in my opinion, yeah, yeah. but it's all yeah. about opinions. Indeed, it is. And now we've got a third opinion uh, in the VAR room as well. But the thing is, you've got a referee, you've got two assistant referees, you've got a fourth official, you've then got now three people in the VAR room. But the problem is, is the expertise in being aware of what is a good challenge, what isn't a good challenge, um, and what deserves, it, what deserves a yellow card, what deserves a red card, and what doesn't deserve a card. Yeah. And sometimes in the context of the instructions they're given, which are not necessarily the same as the no, referees were given a, a, a few years ago. Exactly. So the rules are changing with how to interpret things. When you're talking about when people see stills and I'm talking stills off the VAR yeah, yeah. about somebody a challenge for me that's of no that is the least uh, appropriate way to judge if somebody if what's happening mm. because there are two things also it's that the the reaction or the the way that the uh, the, the person that's been uh, tackled yeah. behaves and responds does he roll 16 times over and do you know do gambols as well um, or, or unfortunately I mean I hope he, I hope that the um, Brentford player is is okay and he's it's not it's not a any anywhere near a serious injury no. um, but injuries but, gonna but, happen that's but, not but, really but, relevant but take, to yeah it, but yeah. take that away yeah I just wanted to just make that no point I think it's important first take that away for me it wasn't it wasn't a poor it was a, a poor challenge because he didn't get the ball yeah. but it's not a, it's not a, a, a challenge that's deliberately going to red card challenge could, yeah. could hurt somebody it's certainly not a straight red card for me well anyway two contentious mm. uh, decisions in the first half Gomez shown a red card for the tackle on Norgard Jensen not shown a card for a later incident involving Doyle one incident that brought a goal was Mopay's finish after 40 minutes and it's Brentford one Wolverhampton Wanderers nil yeah a tale of two tackles and I know that it's, there's no TV pictures for people to see at the moment but I'm fully in agreement with Mel Eves and Mike Taylor there that if one of them's a red card then the other one has to be or neither are the first one straight red for Joe Gomez for a challenge on Christian Norgard where he caught him but it wasn't dangerous it wasn't malicious he wasn't out of control bit like the Calvert-Lewin one last night so if that's the letter of the law and that's what we have to play by so be it but then soon afterwards Matthias Jensen planted his studs on the ankle of, of Tommy Doyle and that went unpunished. So either both are a red or neither are. Again, Wolves up against it now, though. Down to 10 men, a goal down as well. It's a long way back. Can they find a way back in the second half? And we'll have it live on BBC Radio WM Sport. During the half-time interval, we'll start looking forward to our other FA Cup ties this weekend. Don't you just hate it when you're listening to your favourite show on the radio? Then life happens. And you do kind of walk up the steps to the stage and you get that shiver down the back of your spine and you're kind of thinking, are we really doing this? And you go, yep. With most smart speakers, you can ask BBC Sounds to pause, rewind and restart live radio so you never miss a single moment. Are we really doing this? And you go, yep, you're doing this, son. You'll be all right. You'll be fine. And off you go and you do it. It seemed to turn people... Suddenly everyone yeah. went, did you see Rick Astley? Yeah. Get more from your smart speaker. To get started, just say, Ask BBC Sounds. BBC Radio WM Sports. 
So half time then, Brentford won 10 man Wolves nil. The second half on the way on BBC Radio WM Sport. And now we're going to look ahead to the other weekend ties involving our local teams. Uh, four of our five teams all drawn away from home in this FA Cup third round. And Warsaw will be looking to cause an upset as they go to Championship High Flyers Southampton. And Isaac Hutchinson, the Warsaw midfielder, who's got 11 goals already this season, says they'll be heading to St Mary's full of belief. Yeah, definitely. I think that's probably the main um, main difference in this last probably, what is it, six, seven games or so. We've um, we've grown in belief every with every game. Um, and yeah, we just go out there and, and believe that we're going to win against whoever's in front of us. Um, got full confidence in our in our team which we have done all season but I think now we just there's an extra level of of belief and wanting to do well and I think we all believe it now So how are you feeling about this Saturday then going to St Mary's? Yeah buzzing obviously we know that it's going to be a difficult game of course they're doing really well in the championship but we've got our we've got our run of games and we're in form um, like I say our belief is is sky high so that anything can happen and you do go there as underdogs from the outside, but yourselves. I mean, we talked earlier about. I don't, did you play in the Blackburn game earlier in the season, the four three? Came on, I think. Came on, yeah. So to go against the team there, that good side, and absolutely frighten them to death, that must yeah. give you again just added belief that you can go there, not just for a day out, but to actually compete. Yeah, definitely. And I think, um, I mean, sometimes it can help because obviously the quality of the game is going to be better naturally because of the opposition. I think that plays into a lot of our players' strengths, do you know what I mean? Like we've got a lot of technical players, um and I think the quality of the game being higher will mean we've got a better chance of of doing playing to our strengths. Um so yeah, I think it's just a good opportunity to show uh, where we're at as a team. Huge day for Warsaw tomorrow. Going to be back by over 2,000 supporters at St Mary's. So Southampton against Warsaw will have live on FM tomorrow afternoon from 3 o'clock. On DAB, it's the all-championship clash as managerless Birmingham City begin life without Wayne Rooney away at Hull. Now, the lifespan of a Birmingham City manager is more precarious than that of a Prime Minister, isn't it, at the moment, isn't it? Now, Rooney gone after just 83 days. Blues now looking for their 11th permanent boss since Lukas Djukovic signed under Gary Rowett just eight years ago. So up steps long-serving Head of Professional Development, Steve Spooner, a man acutely aware of how much change there seems to have been in recent years. Yeah, that's it. It is, there has been a lot of change. Um... You know, with with John going and then Wayne coming in and then Wayne going, um, but it you know that's modern day football. That's not just this football club that happens at a lot of football clubs, um, and you know it is it's always the way. Some players, uh, you know, like one manager. Some players don't like another, and uh, you know it's just my job just to come in and and try and galvanise everyone and and lift everybody and and take it into the game. Do you feel some of that sort of skirmish or the, the swirling around a bit? Because your job can change with each manager who comes in, each head coach with different ideas and, and wanted the development programme to go down a different route. Yeah, and I've experienced that, yeah. Some managers have been in, didn't want nothing to do with the younger players. Uh, and Wayne has been very accommodating with that. You know, he's very interested in seeing the young players. He spoke at length about, you know, what was the young players, what did they look like? And uh, I think he'd, he'd been impressed with the ones that uh, have come up. So, yeah, it's from from my point of view, it's always nice to have a, a manager come in who's got a development head as well and look into the future. So that's Steve Spooner there, the interim manager at Blues. Lots of talk that Tony Mowbray is now closing in on the job, but as it stands, nothing has yet been confirmed. So at 5.30 tomorrow, our next live game on BBC Radio WM is the uh, Aston Villa heading to Championship side Middlesbrough. Villa looking to advance well, to the f- fourth round for the first time in eight years. They haven't won a cup tie in eight years. Now, it's been a great season so far with lots to look forward to in the league and also in Europe. So how do they stay on track and how do they improve? Unai Emery says it boils down to these three words. Keep being consistent and keep being demanding in our work every day. And uh, we, we, we have to, uh, to remember everything tactically, more or less, uh, about uh, how we, we, we want to, to defend, how we want to, to build our structure with the ball possession and without the ball possession and uh, how we, 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 we can 
keep being consistent in our mind, in our mentality. Uh, try to be competitive each match, try to adapt to the opponent, try to be respectful of them. I think football is very, 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 very difficult. And uh, how we, we, we can keep being consistent in everything. Every day, uh, being responsible, or being mature to work. Every day to, to try to, to rest, to take, to have good food. And every day try to, to respect the opponent, every day try to to build our structure, the, reminding the players uh, how we want to, to, to build up, how we want to, to keep all position with good positioning, how we want react with we are losing the ball, counter pressing, how we want react when we need to, to defend together. It's everything. But uh, we did something better and something worse, but to keep doing it is really important to try to be demanding every day Reminding the, uh, re reminding the players and, and as well trying to be consistent in my mind with the players about uh, the, the level we want to achieve. Now, the only one of our local sides at home in the FA Cup of West Bromwich Albion who hosts uh, National League side Aldershot on Sunday afternoon. We'll have that live as well. And, and Baggy's boss, Carlos Corbran, has confirmed that Daryl DK will start. It'll be his first start for eight and a half months after rupturing his Achilles. And he said it's a big day for both him and the club. We are looking forward for this moment, especially him, because he has been a long time managing his, his injury and now appears the moment that he's going to come back to the competition. He has been training with the group, the training that he could be part of the group. Unfortunately, in a very demanding period of games and no very number of trainings, collective trainings in the day by day, but enough to can use him now and to give the 45 minutes that for me he needs right now. Because for him, he's had a physical battle to get over, but also a, a mental one. So this is going to be a huge positive mental boost for him. I, th I think so. And every time you have the game time, for me, the challenge has been before to arrive to this moment. And now will be a different challenge. The previous challenge was to make himself ready for the competition. And now the challenge that starts from the next game is to make him ready to compete in the best level that he can, to help the team in the best way that he can help the team. Well, as well as on your radio, all our FA Cup commentaries are also available to listen to online this weekend on the BBC Sport website with the Wolves match, which we're halfway through, Blues, Villa and Albion, also available on BBC Sound. So, anyway, back for Wolves. Down to ten men since the ninth minute, trailing by a goal to nil at Brentford. Let's rejoin our commentary team of the former Wolves striker Mel Eves and BBC Radio WM Sports' Mike Taylor. <laughs> I've done it. We can just get to just for a moment. Where have they gone? Uh, so we'll, re we'll rejoin the boys very shortly. Rakeem Omer at breakfast. BBC Radio WM. We've had some great guests on the show. This weekend is 10 years since Benefit Street was first on TV. Would you be interested in taking part in this show? Um, it's just about community spirit. So that's how they pitched this to you. There was nothing involved about benefits. And this week was the European Alvis Championships. We had two impersonators in the studio. Uh oh. How many hours do you want? January can be a little bit meh. Nah. So forget about your blue Mondays. Get your liker on. I'll see you Monday at six. Rakim Omar at breakfast. Weekday mornings when you wake up on BBC Radio WM. BBC Radio WM Sports. So the latest scores for you in the FA Cup. Approaching half-time at Craven Cottage and Fulham lead Championship Strugglers Rotherham by one goal to nil. Bobby Deckard over Reid with the only goal on 24 minutes. And in the 7.45, that was the 8 o'clock kick-off that all over the place. It's still goalless between Tottenham and Burnley. So we can now head back then to the Brentford Community Stadium. Wolves down to 10 men, a goal down as well, any way back. Let's join our commentary team of Mel Eves and Mike Taylor. Yes, thank you, Daz. Uh, Mel's battling his way back from the press room where there's been, well, a, a bit of a debate. Um, we were just having it with uh, with some of our uh, uh, colleagues from uh, the, the Wolves reporting contingent. Uh, the contentious view, I think, is that whether you think it's a red card or not, the Gomez one, the later challenge on Doyle is of a similar nature. Therefore, the uh, the issue is not necessarily what the punishment is, that's something we can debate, but that it should be the same for both. 
Um, but I suspect that that's a conclusion that many Wolves fans will already have come to anyway. Um, but that's generally the opinion here. The point is, Wolves have still got to deal with the situation as it stands. It looks as though Brentford are going to make a change at half-time. Uh, Thomas Frank is nursing a rather injury-laden squad at the moment. So he's going to bring on the uh, young midfielder Miles Pitt Harris for the second half. We'll see shortly who he's going to replace. He obviously had to make a change early on with uh, Janelt replacing the injured Norgard. Uh, Wolves look as though they're going to be the same uh, personnel. He's replacing Roeslev. So Piet Harris for Roeslev, a second uh, Brentford change. Wolves, I don't think we've had any changes from them. So uh, Wolves are still going to be Sar in goal. Uh, Totti, Bueno and Kilman. That's Santi Bueno. Uh, uh, the back three. Matt Doherty and Nelson Semedo, the wing backs. Tommy Doyle's been joined by Pablo Sarabia in, uh, in midfield, although he's largely battling away in there on his own, Tommy Doyle. And then the forwards uh, are uh, Cunha and Belgard are still there. Uh, Melis is um, back with me. And, uh, well, again, Wolves have got to get just get back into, uh, into their jobs, which largely they did well in that first half. They did. They're going to have less of the ball, but... Um they have got players that can hurt Brentford on the on the counter attack. They've got pace. They've got a, ability. Uh, they've got people that can carry the ball as well as uh, running behind. So, mm. you know, there will be opportunities for Wolves. They've just got to be very disciplined, and if they do get chances, they've obviously got to take them. Yeah, the longer they hang in the game, um, and really, there was only one clear chance. It was well, well taken by Mopo, but it was the only really clear chance that Brentford forced. Yeah, and that that was that was force from the, the old-fashioned way of just putting yes. it in the mixer really um, they didn't play their way through they, they put it in the mixer they got enough bodies in there obviously because they got the extra man and uh, it just fell for Mope who's fox in the box yeah so the game isn't over yet by any means uh, with Wolves only one then even though they are playing the majority of it of course with 10 men Totti's header has just about got enough urge on it to get back to Jose Sarp so the Brentford lineup is Strakosha is the goalkeeper, uh, Zanka, Pinnock and Collins, uh, three central defenders, with Lewis Potter effectively playing as wing back on the left hand side, and De Silva attacking from the right. Piet Harris has gone in in midfield at the moment, or oh, he's got in fact he's gone in up front almost alongside Mopay. So Damsgaard, Janelt and Jensen are in midfield, with De Silva attacking from the right. And here are uh, uh, Brentford in the red and white striped shirts. Uh, in possession, attacking the end to our left. And they move it back to Collins. Wolves fans are hearing quite big numbers tonight. It is close to a full house here. In fact, somebody's coming around with the, the high-tech laser display, which is showing the attendance that um, is the bit of paper that this uh, uh, <laughs> member of the Brentford staff is just holding up and be showing us in a moment. Um, but it's close to a full house here, I would suggest. Not all the FA Cup games this weekend will be, but this one almost has been. Good Wolves contingent here, and they've made their presence felt. And back here has come... Uh... Oh, Jensen was uh, offside, I think. Yes, he was chasing then the left-hand side. Kilman tidied up the ball anyway, but it's a free kick uh, to Wolves. We've had nearly three minutes of the second half. And uh, for the most part, Wolves haven't really felt under all that much pressure. No, and they've got, um, which Wolves fans will love to see, one of the players warming up is Pedro Neto, who who could give an, an option for, to, for Wolves to get back in, because if somebody can carry the ball and beat players and make things happen, score goals, make goals, it's Pedro Neto. So I'm sure that we'll, he'll be introduced at some, at some time. Yes, and there really is no need to uh, take it easy with players because uh, obviously they're missing a few Wolves, but those who are here are going to have a, more than a fortnight to rest up before they play Brighton again in 17 days' time. Uh, just under 2,500 Wolves fans uh, here tonight, just being confirmed to us. On uh, It is literally somebody's written on the back of an envelope. I like that. Uh, here's the throw from the left for Wolves working the their way towards... The wonders yeah. of modern technology, Mike. Working their way towards the penalty area. Doherty slipped the pass in there towards Sarabia, who was close to the near post and I think got the last nibble on that. Yeah, there was a defender right with him, so it was never going to go towards the goal, but Sarabia just... Well, he might have done seeing the replay. A slightly more delicate touch from Sarabia might have done the job there. 
He's just stabbed it wide of the near post. But yeah, there was excellent work from Matt Doherty, Mike, and um, Sarabia just got he couldn't get his feet right. It hit his standing foot actually, uh, yeah. his right foot, and um, he couldn't recover from it, and he just it went out for a goal kick. Rather unlike him, and now danger at the other end with Damsgaard set up by De Silva, but his shot was well covered by Saar, who dived down to his left, but always was uh, had everything behind that. Yeah, it's a good, good effort from uh, from Brentford, right on the edge of the box, and uh, good strike, but too close to Saar, who gathered it up uh, pretty neatly. Uh, Wolves have a free kick in the centre of the field. Bell uh, Samedo is just getting some instructions from Gary O'Neill and preparing to pass them on. Wolves have a free kick, which they're going to be bold I think well, I suppose they've got to have one down in a cup tie but well that's that, yeah. that that's their f fr free ki free kicks and breakaways are the way that Wolves will get back into this so they've got to ma take make um, make the most of Max Kilman yeah. Totti um, Bueno's height and then just either get get direct efforts at goal or um, knockdowns well, it was hit towards Kilman who never quite had control of it yeah, on the right. So Brentford have bought it clear, but it was interesting there from a free kick from halfway. The Wolves were prepared to throw quite a few forward, uh, even at this relatively early stage of the second half. Piet Harris carries the ball forward on the Brentford left, and a tame cross from Lewis Potter. Under no pressure, Saar makes the catch and looks for a quick bowl out, but it's gone between Belgard and Cunha, and so it presents the ball back to Brentford, who move it into the centre with Jan out and out to the left and Jensen. Looking for an opening on his right-hand side and played it right into the path. It dropped nicely for De Silva, but he was coming in from a very wide angle, took it on the volley and hit it behind the goal. Yeah, and it was it was that would have been on his right foot, which is his weaker foot as well, uh, Mike. Uh, but uh, again, it's that man De Silva's got in the position, yet he's tried to hit it first time with his right foot, but it's just skewed it well into the crowd and no problem for uh, the Wolves defence or Jose Sarp. Six minutes after half time, Brentford won, Wolves nil. Mopo's goal on 40 minutes. The difference between the teams in terms of the score, the difference between them on the field is that Wolves had uh, Joao Gomez sent off in the ninth minute. Uh, a decision which will have further consequences because he will now miss the next three league games, starting with that Brighton fixture. If there was to be a replay, that would count as to one of the uh, one of the three games as well. But as it stands, he'd miss three league games. Uh, Bright uh, ball is moved back by Brentford inside their own half to Pinnock, out to the left, and Nathan Collins. And now on the touchline is uh, Lewis Potter, and you can hear the Wolves fans chiming for Pedro Neto, uh, singing his name so they wouldn't mind a, a dose of Pedro Neto in the uh, next little while but there's still well over half an hour to go so Gary O'Neill's looked after him carefully he had about what, 20 minutes near the end of the Everton game and things were relatively low pressured so this would be more if you brought him on soon Brentford in possession short of halfway taking their time to get forward now with Zanka to the right touchline and uh, De Silva slotted in a wing back now it's after the uh, removal of Roeslev a pass on down the right for Piet Harris hooking the ball across from the right but there was nobody in the middle anyway and it's gone behind for a goal kick and Wolves are largely yeah. containing Brentford still Wolves, Wolves have got to keep their shape um, and d do a job and knowing and having the faith that they will be able to carve chances out to get them back in the game. Wolves fans are going to get what they want because Pedro Neto is uh, ready to come on. So Gary O'Neill is going to uh, give him plenty of time to influence this game. There are still 36 minutes to go on BBC Radio WM at uh, the Brentford Community Stadium Brentford 1 Wolves 0 and here comes Pedro Neto to replace Sarabia so a uh, slight change of emphasis in that Sarabia is uh, quickish but Neto of course as you all know is an out and out flyer so it'll keep Brentford on their toes it'll have to 
It will. It was a. It, 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 he's. Um, yeah, he's going to be much, much more dangerous in getting behind the um, the Brentford defence. Sarabia, he does everything on the ball. Great left foot. But um, as you quite rightly said, Neto's got that extra bit of direct pace, which is always useful. Paolo Sarabia never looks thrilled to come off. I don't mind that. In the no, play. no, I don't, I don't want a player to I be no. pleased to come off. No, he's looks... just unfortunate because yeah. he's. Uh, he he has been one of the probably the unsung heroes of Wolves um, Wolves good form um, because he's ve he's he's left foot and he does a lot of things that get that go unnoticed. Now Neto brought into the equation immediately on the right and he links up with Semedo who gets a cross in and it's knocked away in front of the near post by Jan Elt but Neto is eager to get on with it. Yeah, he's come on this right hand side. Obviously we know he's left footed, but he's come on the right hand side. And that's uh, side with Nelson Samadio, and he's uh, interchanged with him brilliantly there. Well, he's keen to get involved again here, and uh, Samadio finds him with the throw, and Neto's trying to take on Jan Elt. Always kept the ball alive for the moment, and he dances into the challenge. <laughs> no, the, uh, it has just gone over the line. The linesman had a good look at that. But Neto is, looks full of beans jumping into this, doesn't he? Well, to be honest, I mean, he's, uh, he's got uh, so much skill, the lad. And he's um, more or less twinkle toes yeah. there, Mike. I mean, some of the stuff that he's that he's attempting, but he's he's really up for it. He's come on and he's showed intent straight away, Mike. Football ballet from Pedro Neto. Here come uh, Brentford at the other end with a, a long run to the edge of the penalty area from Lewis Potter that ends, I think, inevitably in a foul. And uh, it's going to be a free kick on the edge of the D. Lewis Potter carried the ball a long way. He started off going forwards. He ended up going sideways. Yeah, he's run across the box and yeah. kept going across the box. And I think it was Belgard because he was the wrong side of it. Uh, yeah, he's the wrong side of him, Mike. And he's. It's always going to be a foul because yeah. all all that all that Lewis Potter has to do, which he did, he just slow down. And the Wolves player has to go in the has to commit that foul, but it's in such a dangerous position that um, Belgard's obviously made a decision. He yeah. didn't want to let him get a get a shot off where he was going, but if he'd have known that that Lewis Potter is naturally kind of le more left-footed than right-footed, uh, he was going away. He was going away. So, yeah. so he, well. W We'll know very shortly whether it was a silly free kick to give away or no. Well, the referee's been in negotiations with the wall for a while, uh, and there are three of them in it at the moment. So Brentford are going to try and get a few on that line themselves. The free kick is a whisker to the right of centre, and it's right on the edge of the D. Now, somebody's gone down in the little scrum. Belgard's gone down. And... Uh, there's a lot of it. Totti's getting very aerated about something, and uh, he wants to have it out with Mopay. That's probably not a good idea. Where's the referee in all this? He's uh, going to try and sort it out. Well, the so uh, the squabbling uh, parties. Kilman is uh, coming up and trying to say something. There was a big shout from the crowd behind the goal. The referee's coming and telling Mopay that's enough. Now he's going to find. No, it's not Totti, it's Jose Sarr. He's, going, he's given Jose Sarr a big grin. Says, Jose Sarr says, come here. He pulls the referee back and says, I want to tell you how it is. Um, and uh, where is all this going? Jose Sarr is still making something of it. And it's probably time to zip it now, I think, Jose. Before he gets into trouble as well. He gives Neil Mopay a hug. Now, but as you were, Chaps. I don't, I don't know what Mopay... Mopay is just walking across and just standing... He's, he's, he's on the post. Yeah. But they could both be well served to get on with their jobs, I think, Mopay well, and uh, to be Joseph fair, Sarr. I think that the referee could quite rightly book Mopay for ungentlemanly conduct. I don't know whether that's still an offence, but it is. <laughs> Pro probably is. Anyway, here's a free kick hit after all that, hit by Louis Potter and it bounces off the wall. Well, it's, yes. I, I think that's poet, that's poetic justice. I think they call that, Mike. It's come back inside uh, the Brentford half, and now it's with Strakosha, the goalkeeper who's been largely spectating since that one early uh, scare he had. 
Lewis Potter out to the left to Piet Harris and now plays the pass in field to Jensen close to the edge of the penalty area Belgard trying to block him putting the ball in Jensen floating in beyond the far post there's nobody there in red and white so it's chested back to the keeper by the tireless Doherty and now Sarri's looking for somebody to throw it to 1-0 to Brentford it stays 15th minute of the second half and uh, here's a clearance from Kilman it's coming towards us and it bounces into the crowd for a throw to Brentford which they've sent back inside their own half it's rather a scrappy game now isn't it which um, well is which is okay yeah. because w w Wolves aren't going to I, I don't think Wolves are going to um, undo Brentford with a 30 or 40 pass move no. it's going to be pretty direct um, and Neto Belgard or um, that man Cunha actually doing something to get Wolves back into it so not being outrun at the moment Wolves Lewis Potter's uh, attempt to dribble his way in from the left here uh, it came to nothing and Wolves put the ball forward early towards Cunha and a hurried clearance from Strakosha yeah. has seen it go out for a throw and well, that, that was caused just by Cunha he Cunha didn't within 10 yards of the ball but he just harried them well he, he actually accelerated with he, he, he accelerated towards the keeper and the keeper I think sensed it that uh, it's best to actually get rid than, uh, than take a touch all thrown back on the wall side Santiago Bueno to Saar and there's a Brentford player chasing him down Piet Harris but he's got the kick away Collins heads it back into the Wolves half Samedo's looking for Neto but he doesn't find him yeah, it's yeah. out for a Brentford throw 16 minutes after half time on BBC Radio WM Brentford 1 Wolves 0 Daz Hale will take your calls after the game through until 10 o'clock and uh, also look ahead to the rest of the weekend's FA Cup games with uh, Walsall at Southampton tomorrow hoping to cause a shock having avoided one when they played two non-league teams in the early rounds they got a good one tomorrow uh, Hull against Birmingham City with Blues under caretaker managership of course a good uh, win of the ball by Semedo a set Wolves going forward they've got five going forward and Cunha carrying the ball gives it to Neto corner of the penalty area and it's well defended here by Collins who stands up straight against Neto and makes the block yeah, that was a really good opportunity and that's what we're talking about in that uh, Cunha then got, got Pedro Neto involved and um, Neto couldn't quite squeeze it through. I think it was t back to Cunha or I think Bellegard was in there as well. So there will be opportunities for Wolves. There will be. Josh De Silva, who was excellent in the first half on his first start uh, uh, yeah. since he's come back from a hamstring injury, he's going off. Yeah, he's, um, he's, he's been a big hit for Brentford for me and I think they'll take that as a massive positive going forward for their league campaign. Yes, uh, if they're going to get away from uh, trouble, he'll do some of the work. And his place is taken up by Michael Olakigbe, a 19-year-old uh, winger they got from Fulham a little while ago. Throw in from the right from Semedo and Belgard's trying to make something of it. And he's won a corner and Wolves are still buzzing Brentford don't look entirely comfortable on their lead I must say well they must, they must be they'll, they'll be um, alerted to the fact that uh, Neto's come on they know about Cunha cause it, they don't want to give him any space Belgard as well he's very sharp and then you've got the big lads up from the back um, for this and corner here, here's the corner delivered in fast and flat by Neto but headed away by Pinnock in front of the near post is he going to go out for another corner I think it will yes so Neto gets another go from the right Belgard offers him the short option but Neto wants to put it in towards the lighthouses on the far side and no he doesn't he changes his mind and plays it short to Belgard now that opens up the opportunity for Neto to accelerate onto it and tee up Doyle. Doyle steps around a challenge and shoots oh, and scores a great goal. goal, Mike. Lovely strike by Tommy Doyle and Wolves a level at 1-1.
They've been playing with 10 men for most of the game, but from the set piece, they were always going to have an opportunity. It took a few moments to get it to Doyle, but he stepped around the challenger in front of him and speared his shot into the top corner and warms a level at Brentford at 1 1. What a strike! With, with first goal for Wolves with his left foot from the edge of the box right into the, the goalkeeper's top left hand corner top right as we look at it but what a goal but the, the thing is that the Brentford defence probably didn't get out to him because they're expecting they're defending heavily the three big centre halves that have come up Wolves, uh, Wolves three at the back and that's kept them occupied they've played it on the floor across and um Great strike from Doyle, really pleased for him. First goal for Wolves, 1-1. One, yeah. one. Well, you might as well start with a good one. Well, yeah. I, I, I wondered if it had curled, but seeing the replay from behind the goal, oh, it wasn't a curl, I he think just smacked it. it. He's just put his foot through yeah. it, Mike. No. He's caught it sweet as a nut. Well, now we've got a game, haven't we? Brentford won, Wolves won, and there are still 25 minutes to go. And if you're a Brentford team that's been in dodgy form lately... You know, human nature says you're getting a bit jittery here. They're going to get a bit nervous because when they went 1-0 up with uh, with the ten, with Wolves being down to 10 men, they think they can, they're can they going to boss it, etc. But they, you're quite right. You, you can sense the feel. They've just gone off it a bit after just uh, Neto's been on for five minutes. They seemed to go flat, didn't they, Brentford, Mike? And we could sense it. You mentioned it. Well, they've lost five in a row in the league and that would sap the confidence it, of the best well, teams. And it is. Yeah. Every, every level of, um, of, of sport, of, of life, is, is a lot about confidence. Yeah. You know, and uh, you could see the confidence just draining from them a little bit. Uh, and then... But I did say that Wolves would get chances and it's about taking them and didn't, he ta didn't they take it? Tommy Doyle right scored, strike yeah, from Tommy Doyle scored four goals last season for Sheffield United in uh, his loan spell that helped them to promotion including Sheffield United's goal of the season last season and well there have been a few contenders for the Wolves goal of the season this season but that yep. one will take its place in the final I suggest um I am reminded by Daz, uh, yes, yeah. that if the, uh, there is a replay, or indeed if Wolves win, then the uh, one of the three games that Joe Gomez now faces suspension for will be uh, used up by that, because uh, red cards, yellow cards uh, alone, are, are counted entirely separately for the FA Cup this season, but red cards do carry into the league and it will be a three-match uh, suspension. Because if they won the replay and then played in the fourth round, that would be two different. But anyway, we're getting ahead of ourselves. However, Wolves have harried Brentford into a mistake, and they've given up another corner, and Brentford suddenly looked full of the collie wobbles. Yeah, they do. The, 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 game, the game has changed since Neto yeah. came on, actually. By yeah, well, it has. Uh, whether they... Well, he's, he's getting serenaded now in that corner of the ground. By uh, he'll be hearing those chimes in his sleep. It's not a very good corner though. Uh, on this occasion, he's bounced off a defender obligingly back to Neto. There's a couple of players having best of three falls in front of the near post. They spring back up because Neto's still got it. And now he takes on the defender, gets his cross in, deflects off the first man. And the team is up for Doyle. He has to go off the right foot this time. And he hasn't got it through to the goal. He has knocked out Jensen. I don't think quite literally, but Jensen's worn that shot from Doyle who he's just well at least he's shown Brentford he's quite happy to take it off either foot because the goal what, was off his left what I, what, I, I, what, right. I, what I can't get nowadays is the ball's hitting from 10 yards away it goes down and you have to stop the game yeah. and I know we look I'm the first one to say safety of players is the overriding thing yeah. but I've never seen that happen before in well, decades yeah. gone by never a problem no the well, they're going to check him out, but I think he'll be all right. These are professional footballers. Yeah, it's not as if it, it's it's not as if it's hit some some old lady, with, you know, with a bag of shopping that's just walking past and wasn't involved. I understand. Uh, anyway, he's being checked out, and Gary O'Neill he's taking the opportunity um, to get his players over. Several of them, Kilman, Doyle, and uh, Doherty are over here, and uh, actually O'Neill's not doing all the talking in there. Um, Sean Derry and his colleagues are doing some of it there are more changes in the offing I think 
but uh, it's a busy so all the bounce is in the Wolves team at the moment Jensen's uh, still uh, being asked if he knows what day it is so uh, he's going to be taking a moment but even this break he's not bad I think for Wolves just now because looking at the body language of the two teams Wolves are, are quite happy there a few of them are chatting passing on instructions the rest of them are on the ball to their feet ready to go the Brentford team all look a little bit unsure of themselves at the well, moment. Well, you, you, you mentioned it quite rightly before the game about the, the confidence and the team spirit, and you could visibly see it or feel it or taste it um, reg at the, the, with the Everton game. Yeah. Wolves have carried it on through. All credit to Brentford. Um, they've, it started off, it was pretty end-to-end pretty -end stuff. Both teams ch trying to play the, in, in their, their, their way, the similar ways. and uh, But the sending off... Has, uh, has deflated Wolves a little bit, obviously, and I think that from the reaction of some of the players, as well as the, what I saw, very hard, very harsh decision by the referee. And, um, you know, you've, you've, got to, you've got to look at it that way. But then the game has turned on Pedro Neto coming on um, 10... 10, 10 minutes or so 15 minutes into the second half mm. and w Wolves have you could visibly see Wolves have got the bit between their teeth and even the few minutes before they actually got the equaliser it was all Wolves it wasn't a, it was not a breakaway as I said it would no. be they actually sustained pressure for a few minutes now uh, Jensen got up and walked away from that incident but he is being replaced um so he's coming, he's walked off uh, on 80 to the near touchline and there are going to be, I think, two changes for Brentford and there, there are folders and papers and all sorts being used to explain. One of the uh, substitutes, Yeho Yamoliok, is being asked to look at two different pieces of paper at the same time. Uh, so he's coming on, also coming on is Sheldon Baptiste, but not, not yet evidently. Jensen's already walked off, but neither of the subs has come on. So, Brentford, to my reckoning, are playing with... Uh, let's have a quick count-up. Yeah, there's only ten of them on the field at the moment. So, I don't quite know what happened there. Jensen's gone, and uh, presumably not to return. I mean, suppose he could be a... He could come back, because they haven't actually substituted him yet. Uh, Brentford go out to the right, and Damsgaard chips the ball over the top, and Saar's got an eye on that all the way, and he's going to gather it up. So the fourth official is going to announce soon uh, uh, all these changes. But Brentford won, Wolves won, and it's the ten men who have the momentum at the moment after Doyle's splendid goal on 64 minutes. Clearance from hand from uh, Saar falls towards Belgard. And now Doyle chips it over the top and asks Cunha to chase. Defender was favourite, but now... Belgard's nipping in there again and Wolves look full of running and Belgard giving Pinnock the hurry up there. Has to get his back pass away to Strakosha who clears it and Kilman comes and commands the ball on halfway and plays a great pass to Neto. Right side of the penalty area. Neto up against two. Back to Kilman. Will captain shoot? He does, but he can't curl it. <laughs> well, that would have been a nice one for the Wolves captain who scored against Everton last week, of course, and... Uh, He's well, it's a sign of Wolves' growing confidence. He's decent when he gets the ball and brings it forward, uh, Max. You can't take any uh, liberties with him. But he couldn't quite curl it into the far corner there after excellent work from Pedro Neto again. Uh, now, substitution. Zanka has gone off and been replaced by Yehoy Yarmolyuk, the uh, Ukrainian player. And uh, also coming on is Shandon Baptiste. And he has replaced Jensen. So Baptiste, I would imagine, will go into the back three and uh, Yarmolyuk presumably will go into midfield instead of Jensen and we've got 17 minutes and added time to go and it's Brentford one walls one and as it stands we're going to have a replay presumably the week after next so I don't know exactly what date Wolves are going out to uh, their warm weather training camp but I, I assume they'll presumably they'll have factored that in um, to, because they don't have a league game until January the 22nd but I would imagine that the replay of this if it goes on to be a replay and we're somewhere away from that yet but if it is then it'll be on I would think Tuesday the 16th would be the most likely date but we'll see anyway we're not there yet
Um, Brentford are in possession on the left, and Luis Potter getting a return pass, but Belgard with a full, uh, Samedo with a fully committed challenge and a well-timed one as well. Now Samedo did very well there. He's um, his overall game has been has been absolutely top-notch and. Uh, Another excellent, excellent piece of defending there from Samada. Continuing a first-rate season, I think, in most ball fans' opinion. Yep. Set, uh, 29 minutes of the second half have gone by on BBC Radio WM. Brentford won, Wolves won in the FA Cup third round. And here's Doyle. Score of a very tasty Wolves goal. With a free kick high towards the edge of the Brentford penalty area, it's headed away, and then Mope is fouled, so Brentford are going yeah, to have a free kick. Nelson Samedo used all his experience mm. and uh, made sure that Mope was going nowhere, and he knew that he was going to give a foul away, but he did it in such a way that um, he wasn't going to get a card for it. In. Yes. So it was very clever. Fulham won Rotherham nil, and Tottenham but nil, Burnley nil are the other FA Cup uh, games at the moment. The Tottenham game's at half-time. The Fulham game is about a quarter of an hour behind this one. So uh, they all kicked off at different times. So I'm sure there's very good reason for it. Out to the left is Janelt uh, for Brentford, halfway inside the Wolves' half. As with Lewis Potter. Now back to Pinnock. Across to Baptiste. The... One of the new arrivals, and the ball's lost by the other one, Yarmolyuk. To Neto, <laughs> spins against one challenge and then collides with Dan's guard and tumbles over. It's going to be a free kick. Pedro Neto, he's, I can't tell you how much he's obviously enjoying being out on the field again. I suppose, you can see him, he's, yeah. he's, uh, he's really enjoying it. He's like a kid in a sweet shop. He's just running around, uh, wanting to do as much as he can. Well, there's not many of us really can put ourselves in the position of an injured footballer. If you can't do not only what you're paid to do, but what you love doing, and then you, and especially yeah. if he's going really well, as he was for Pedro at the time of well, his injury, absolutely. and then you can't do it for two months, it must be unbelievably frustrating. He was in such good form, wasn't he, Mike? He was back to the form that everybody knows that he can... Oh, poor can clearance. Wolves have seized on it. Doyle's fan, Belgard, but he couldn't find Neto with a pass across the penalty area. Cunha's still making a nuisance of himself. Brentford have... Uh, played themselves back into trouble and Cunha says how's that for a corner and the referee agrees with him and Brentford up, wobbling they are up for it the Wolves lads um, Brentford uh, as you say uh, even with the extra man finding it very difficult Mike We've just seen a close up of a section of Wolves fans and everybody's smiling just struck by that you don't see many, signs, many times like that in a football crowd everybody's got a big grin on their face um, Wolves are enjoying this rather more than Brentford are at the moment. There are 13 minutes to go. And uh, Wolves are in playing with 10 men for most of the game, remember. Here's Neto's corner towards Do Doherty, I think, got a bit of that. Yeah, you can tell by his reaction that it was him, but it wasn't a clean header and it's one. Yeah, and he's just a, a little bit frustrated with himself that he didn't get a better connection with his header. Away comes Lewis Potter. On the Brentford left, infield to Damsgaard, who carries it forward, and now out to uh, Piet Harris, coming in from the left side. Good-looking cross, well defended by Totti, who had a slight height advantage against Mope, but nevertheless did well to get himself in a good position there, when it looked like it might be Mope's ball in the first place. Olakigbe can't get into the side of the penalty area, but not a great clearance, and... Uh, Brentford might yet make something of this. Damsgaard works it to Lewis Potter on the left. And Samedo's almost wearing the same pair of boots as him. He was that close. And so Lewis Potter has to go back to Damsgaard. And further across to the right. And Brentford, Collins works it out to the right touchline. It's into Piet Harris. He's got the ball a bit stuck with easy feet. Kilman stays close to him. And a shot from the edge of the penalty area on the follow-up is blocked. Wolves try and break out. But Belgard can't catch up with the ball. 12 to go. Brentford won, Wolves won. And at half past seven, you wouldn't necessarily have expected a grandstand finish to this game, but here we are at five to nine getting one. Janelt out to the left. Lewis Potter's there for Brentford. And short to Pinnock. Feels like they should be trying to speed the game up and, and harry the ten men, and it, seems, and it feels like the other way around. That's what I'm saying. That the the dynamics and feel of the game have just flipped, yeah. and it was just a minute or so after um, 
Pedro Nato came on. Mm. And I don't think it was completely him, but it's just no. that the, the overall dynamic changed and Lifted Wolves the team, have been in the ascendancy. Yeah, they have, but Lee's Lewis Potter putting a cross in, Mopay trying to chest it down, but it sort of bounced off his chest as if he was wearing a breastplate, the, it sort of cannoned away. And there will be up there will be situations there will be situations as we've got now where Brentford will have the ball mm. uh, and they will they will because they've got the extra man have the opportunity to get it into the box but they, they still haven't um, carved Wolves carved Wolves open um, left jaws I saw uh, exposed etc so you, you're going to have to say right put it in the box at the right time because we're going to deal with it because our centre backs are going to get to it and that's what's happened up to now yeah. Wolves are you know, playing, they're, they're, you're playing against a good footballing side yeah, for, with exactly. 10 men for 70 minutes they've only conceded a goal from open play now Semedo's worked hard there to fend off Lewis Potter and win the ball and he set Neto away on the near side the Wolves right Semedo's overlapped outside him Neto's got in field and found Belgard moves it on to Doyle <laughs> I don't want him to shoot he's miles out so he moves it on to Totti forward now to Belgard on the left he's Trying to find an angle for Cunha. Cunha's tee maybe teed it up for Doyle. It's well defended. But Totti picks up. Piet Harris is giving chase. Doyle thought he was fouled by Piet Harris. He lets the referee know it as well. Neto's pass. Trying to work a 1-2 with Semedo. And that's also well defended. This time by Janel. And here's Damsgaard on the left. But Wolves, the 10 men, are trying to press the 11 men back. Baptiste is pushing forward towards halfway being tracked by Cunha who is still full of running but he's wrong footed by Damsgaard who comes forward on the left collides with Neto off the ball that's a free kick says the ref free kick to Brentford Neto might be getting a yellow card I think and he is and we've got nine minutes to go and so much about this game feels topsy-turvy now it's the, it's the t uh, ten men who are making much of the running well, they are, and I'm not sure he was booked there. I don't Neto, whether, I think. I don't know whether it was Neto or one of the other Wolves, but, but anyway, yeah. uh, it might have been Neto, yeah. Well, if it is, he wants to zip it now because uh, well, he's yes, still having he, it out with the referee. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah. He needs to be... He, ne he doesn't yeah. need to get a yellow card for something no. totally unnecessary. No, you can be over-enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. He's got to be very, very professional. Yeah. Here's Lewis Potter from the left for Brentford. Work back now to Pinnock. Pinnock across to the right and Collins. And now a chance to cross deep into the penalty area. Lewis Potter's up for that, but Semedo was up for it too. No, it's good defending from Semedo. Um, when he first came, I did say that his defending wasn't probably as up to speed Premier League-wise because he's been so used to not defending in playing, playing in Spain, you know, for obviously one of the top teams, Barcelona. So, but... His, his defensive duties have been uh, have, have, have very much now up to the mark, as, as was demonstrated by that far that header at the far post. It was his fourth season in England now, Nelson Tomato. Uh, there's a chase down the Brentford left, and they thought they should have had a free kick, Piet Harris, but the referee disagreed. So it's going to be a goal kick to Wolves. There are eight minutes to go. Brentford one, Wolves one. And uh, you can call BBC Radio WM to talk about this game, or indeed anything uh, to do with the FA Cup this weekend. There's been a few talking points from this one, and some good games to come uh, tomorrow. 0808 100956, and Daz will take your call through until 10 o'clock on uh, a slightly oddly timed uh, FA Cup night, with uh, it being a 7.15 kick-off here. But at the moment we're heading for a replay, Doherty he's penalised for handball just short of halfway much to his annoyance so it's going to be a oh. Brentford free kick this yeah hit him on the shoulder obviously le leading with the, the controversial sending off some of the decisions from the, the referee have, have been probably head scratching from a Wolves point of view anyway Lewis Potter from the left playing the uh, pass short to his right and Damsgaard steers it in Lewis Potter who's been quite lively sets it up for Janel deep cross it's far too deep it's a Brentford player tumbled over at the far post but the ball was sailing over all of them and uh, oh superb challenge by Cunha has got Wolves out of a tight spot in the left back corner and he comes spinning away with the ball carrying it up towards halfway eventually 
Brentford it just from sheer weight of numbers get it back from him but Cunha is still racing around the pitch no, uh, he's got he's got uh, tremendous uh, he's a really good athlete tremendous energy levels as well and he uh, he leads by example he does growing into his uh, tight walls just on a year now since he joined Wolves and uh, here's Pinnock coming forward towards the edge of the penalty area and working it out to the left and Lewis Potter and a good short pass played for Damsgaard who saw where that was going and it's set back for Baptiste and his shot was missing completely bounced off Piet Harris and ricocheted wide could have gone anywhere that but it's gone wide yeah well it would have been it would have been hard on Wolves yeah. if, if that had have rebounded and gone um, and gone into the net but it could have easily but uh, th there was no control on it whatsoever no. from the from the ricochet and uh, Wolves in my view quite earned, earned, earned the that little slice of luck that um, it went out for a goal kick they did they haven't had to trust to luck all that much in this game no, they, they played certainly very well. haven't played very well but that one it was just hit by Baptiste into Piet Harris who couldn't possibly have been expecting it and it's gone wide off him and there are five minutes plus added time no doubt and it's Brentford 1, Wolves 1. We haven't seen any obvious VAR interventions in the second half. That's not to say there haven't been any because the, the purple screen of doom isn't being used for this game. For the, like they did in the Premier League. We just gathered that it's been used because everything stops. Uh, the ball's been carried forward down the left uh, by Cunha. And he's managed to win it back having been tackled and then he's tackled for a second time and the referee let all that go I don't think there was a foul in that from either player and it's gone back to the Brentford goalkeeper Strakosha who shows great confidence in Nathan in Jan Elt, and Jan Elt's going to try and run the length here is he? he's carried it all the way to halfway and then gives the ball out to Ola Kigbe who's going to try and run in from the right and his cross hits the body of a Wolves defender and runs in towards Mopay who's uh, drawn Santiago Bueno out of position with him and now Mope yeah, the second attempt turns the ball forward a touch from Baptiste and a deep cross Luis Potter at the far post and Saar saves it and he saves the follow up as well that's driven in by Damsgaard and uh, well they might have been a foul before the second shot but Luis Potter's header certainly would have stood but Jose Saar who seemed to be leaning one way and sticking his leg out the other made the save yeah, well, it's about time. I mean, let's be honest. I think we forget we forgot because of Wolves' dominance yeah. that they're the team with 10 men, not Brentford. So you expect Brentford to actually test the Wolves' defence and they've done so on that occasion. But Saar has Saar come up trumps. Because he... Let's be honest. He, Jose Saar hasn't had that much to not, do. Not and you really. would expect him to have had at least crosses to deal with and, and incidents to deal with but he hasn't he's made three or four routine saves yeah. he certainly hasn't done anything spectacular but that, that was again I think he would think that was at least an 8 out of 10 job to save that but he did it and uh, it is still 1-1 one, one. and there are three minutes to go Lewis Potter who perhaps been the best Brentford player in the second half play centre passing field but Kilman stole it and immediately released Neto Neto's trying to run Pinnock into the penalty area Pinnock gets a toe on the ball and it's a corner and Neto made 50 yards there brilliant run they were fr frightened uh, frightened stiff of uh, Neto especially when he got in the box and Pinnock was very careful but um, Pedro Neto was looking and there wasn't because he was so quick getting into the box from probably just inside the, the, the Brentford half nobody I think Belgard was breaking a neck to get up with him but nobody was there and he had to then t that's why he turned back and tried to do it again uh, because there was nobody to pass to he had four defenders chasing after him on the yeah the, the four defenders weren't yeah. the problem he just, wanted, he just he was just looking for somebody to, to get the ball to from the short corner Doyle tried to slip a pass into the bell guard right side of the penalty area but it broke down Brentford would like to attack from deep but Wolves have held them up and, yeah they've uh, held oh, them up yeah. very well so that's the, the front two have earned time for everybody else to get back into position and there are two minutes and added time left and in from the right come Brentford. Short pass played to Mope, and there are men over here. Damsgaard on the left trying to get it onto a, a shooting angle. He can't, as again Samedo stuck to him. 
Now it's worked back to Yanel. Crosses to the right-hand side of the area. Piet Harris was up for it. It's a header won by Totty, and it's a corner to Brentford. Now, Totty stood his ground very well. The, the, the three centre-backs have been uh, pretty immovable up to now. They've done their job. Short corner with 75 seconds and added time to go. And 1-1 in the third round of the FA Cup, and a poor cross resulted from it. And that's a foul on Cunha, is it? No! Referee says no it isn't and Brentford are coming forward again Cunha was trying to bring it out of defence suddenly Wolves are back pedalling Pinnock fires it in from the left side of the box Wolves have men back to block and it comes out to Lewis Potter forward to Pinnock who's still forward from the previous set piece finds Yanelt Yanelt floats this beyond the far post it's going to be a goal kick Wolves standing up to it they are Mike um, I think we're all... Uh, Cunha's having, a, uh, having quite rightly having a word with the referee because he was he was barged off the ball, Mike. <laughs> Look, he I was dragged back. I cannot unless the referee. The only thing is the referee might have had his back to it, which he shouldn't have done. But um, um, it's a terrible yeah. decision. We're going to get a Wolves debut here uh, in first team football for Tawanda Churewa, a 20-year-old they signed from Ipswich uh, just before the last transfer deadline. He's going to replace uh, Jean-Ric de Bellegarde. Uh, he's been on the bench a few times uh, lately, made three first-team appearances for Ipswich, having made his first-team debut for them at just turned 16. So uh, he's been on the boil for a bit at Ipswich, and now he gets a chance to come on well, with good, five minutes to go. Good luck to the young man. Yeah. I hope he, uh, let's, uh, hope he can make a real impact, but uh, congratulations to him. I'm told they really reckon him. Uh, to Ander Chure well, where he's impressed O'Neill he came in just after Gary O'Neill was appointed but I, I, I know well, he's caught his eye well he's got to impress Gary, Gary O'Neill because the the position the game's in um, you know it's on a knife edge here so he's got to trust the lad so um, well it's a nice chance to be a hero and, and isn't it, it well it's a s smashing chance for the, for the young man yeah well good for him and we're into five minutes minimum of added time we've had 45 seconds of it Wolves have the ball inside the Brentford half and it's a throw, which Doherty takes. Doyle returns it to him. And Doherty wins another throw. A replay in the offing at Molyneux. A week on presumably Tuesday or Wednesday, although that would remain to be seen. And Doyle plays a pass which deflects just away from Doherty. But Wolves are working hard, and here's Cunha who's worked as hard as anybody, and he's carrying the ball forward, right to challenge, and another one, and carries it to Neto, Neto to shoot, no, couldn't keep it down, it was a difficult one, but he hit it hard enough, but just too high. He's well capable of that, he's just pulled it onto his left foot to hit it into the far corner, top left hand corner as, the, as, uh, as we look at it from here, but uh, you could, he knew what he wanted to do straight away, but it just bobbled up just as he hit it. Win, lose or draw, the really good news from tonight is that Pedro Neto is back. He had a bit of a run out against Everton in a game that was already pretty much done. He looks back in proper business tonight, which is yeah, terrific. Yeah, he looks at, every time he gets it, he looks a threat. So that's a big plus now. The ball played short into the Brit Wolves penalty area. Mopo's trying to work it through. Chirewa was back there to help win it. Now he's got to be careful. The ball's worked to the right side of the penalty area. And again, Wolves just flood squeezed, their own box yeah they just squeezed it yep. uh, Brentford out there well if that's the way every it's every time be they sometimes. were looking to pull the trigger they were either getting somebody mm. there to block it or um, well, intercept yeah. it sometimes that's good enough another cross comes in Santi Bueno headed it straight up in the air and Saar made sure he was under it when it came down yeah the three the three, the three centre-backs, Santiago in the middle in the absence of Dawson and then um, obviously the captain Kilman and Totti have been, have been brilliant, Mike, tonight. Well, never mind our verdict, you can probably hear the verdict being given by two and a half thousand Wolf supporters at the moment uh, out of a crowd of uh, nearly 17,000 and they've made, well, they're one-seventh of the crowd but they've made a great deal more than one-seventh of the noise. Uh, here's Lewis Potter on the Brentford left and he's trying to run... Samedo, not many have done that tonight. Samedo has steered it out for a corner. That's been a good contest, and the corner is. Oh no, it's not taken yet. There's a bit of a flare up between Samedo and Lewis Potter. Samedo uh, wants to keep away. Yeah, they don't want to get involved in that. Don't give the referee a decision to make. And Wolves look a bit worried here. They look really worried that Tony Harrington is going to make 
another decision with consequences. He's calling across Lewis Potter. Neto is uh, trying to explain something to the referee. He needs to call it yeah, as well. Yeah, he does. He, he, I think you need to get yeah. Neto away. Referee's got a he, yellow he's card. He's coming out. back again, Neto. No, he needs no, to no. get out the way. Max Gilman, get the get yeah. Neto out the way. There's nothing to be gained. He's, he's, got, he's no. Who's he? Get? He's got a yellow card out. Yeah. Well. Well, who, who's need a little bit of a little bit of sense here. Neto has come. He's still pleading with the referee. It's a yellow card for Lewis Potter, I think. Neto saying he had him round the neck. Is, is Neto, Neto going to get sent off? Somebody come and look after Pedro here because. Uh, Who's being booked? I, I don't, well, I thought Lewis uh, Potter was booked. Well, if, if Neto gets booked. booked. Yeah, well, I don't think he is at the moment. Who else has been booked? Oh, Samedo, is it? Samedo's been booked. Now, Wolves need a little bit of discipline here. And whether they're right or wrong, that isn't really the point at the moment. The point well, is that they can't really afford to be talking themselves into bother. I don't know what's going on, but. No, the best thing that, that can happen here for Wolves is that we get on with the... Oh, hang on, checking possible red card. Neto is, has finally got his way, I think, in that he's been saying for quite a while that one of the Brentford players had... Uh, that Lewis Potter Lewis. had, Soma had Samedo around the neck. Now, that's Neto's version. Uh, the VAR are checking it. We are not being shown that replay at the moment. We're getting a look of... A, a, a close-up of Thomas Frank, who is chewing slightly harder on his gum than he has been for most of the evening. Neto is still talking to the referee, and that, uh, well, that I worries think Neto's, me. Ne well, Neto's probably... I'm looking at Neto's body language. He's very calm. He's got yeah. his hands down. No. Oh, no. And now, now they've checked it. Yeah. And so... Obviously, so the obviously, so, stand, obviously yeah. somebody... A Brentford player getting one of the Wolves players Here's around the, the throat isn't yeah. a problem. Well... Yeah, the, the, well, the, a yellow card was given. That's Gary O'Neill's very cross. He's very cross. And quite rightly, I think that yeah. Wolves have, again, yeah. a wa certainly away from home, have got short end of the yeah. stick, I think is the term. But uh, Well, look, Gary O'Neill's having his out with the fourth official, so uh, he can carry on with that. The corner's been cleared, and here's a punt downfield, and Chiray was giving chase, but it's dealt with by Pinnock. And we've had six minutes of added time, but there'll be a bit more now because of that delay. So here's Jan Elton. Neto has hurtled back and made the challenge. Neto's shouting at Jan Elt. Turn it down a bit, Pedro. He worries, Pedro, he's he worries gotta, me, that. Yeah, he's got to keep his cool. He's yeah. got to be, as I say, I keep saying it, he's got to be professional. He can't let mm. his emotions run away with him. He's got to control yeah. his emotions under pressure. Because it is under pressure now, the last minute or so, few minutes. For the first time in the game, I feel like Wolves need the, need the final whistle. Here's a crossing from the right, and Neto's back helping out to defend, but it's not away properly. Jan Elt out to the left, to Lewis Potter, to Damsgaard. Nearly seven minutes over we've had. We're in the VAR delay now. That's a harmless cross from Damsgaard. Jose Sarr's got it. And Wolves might be getting a replay now. Well, it's the least they deserve. I think they've been absolutely brilliant for the last um, half an hour or so, Mike. Uh, you, no, nobody here, unless they were counting the players, would, would suspect that um, Wolves had only got ten men and Brentford at eleven. No, that's quite right, that. And it's a, uh, there it is. It's all over. 1-1. One, one. So we'll try again the week after next. And uh, a game that really could have been very difficult for Wolves. But still, oh, it's still going on here now. Jose Sarr and uh, one of the Brentford players. Wolves need to get on the bus now, I think. They've, well, got, I think they've, Wolves, got, they've done all right. They've done great, actually. They've done, they've done the business. There's, the, there's arguments going on all over the... All uh, over. And, and the Mopay, have gone out. <laughs> uh, Cunha's remonstrating with Mope. Um, Saar, one of the uh, one of one of the Brentford players was uh, was accosting him. Saar's then probably winding up all the Brentford fans by applauding the fact that Wolves have uh, have got a result. Well, this this I suppose this gets everybody off any further VAR punishment because the floodlights have come. Yeah, I think somebody somebody <laughs> in their wisdom has switched the oh, lights off. Well, there we go. <laughs> Another chilling's been found. Uh, look, to quickly wrap this up, um, Wolves did a lot of good things in that. It's a very well-earned well draw to the extent that until the last two minutes, there was no stage of that where I felt like Wolves were hanging on. No, as I said.
anybody coming to watch it with half an hour to go would have had no idea if you hadn't have mentioned it they had no idea that Wolves had, were the team with 10 men no idea no. whatsoever because Wolves were in that much they were that comfortable even when um, Brentford got it but didn't they had to put the balls in there they had to make the, the Wolves defence work which you would expect but yeah. Wolves for me comfortably dealt with, with any threat that Brentford had and uh, Brentford were under pressure especially when um, Pedro Neto got the ball you could see them absolutely they were ganging up on him they were that frightened there were mm. three four five players making the way to mm. to Neto as quickly as they could which left other people free and that's why um, Tommy Doyle has scored a, a wonderful equaliser his first goal for the club with his left foot not his favoured right he manoeuvred it to his left right in the top yeah. corner great stuff beautiful strike uh, must say, Wolves fans have enjoyed some great performances recently but the travelling fans I would suggest have enjoyed this draw as much as they've enjoyed any other wins because they're really giving the crowd the uh, players a huge reception uh, there are plenty of circumstances in which a Premier League manager wouldn't want an extra game but I reckon on this occasion, Gary O'Neill will be pretty pleased. He'll be absolutely um, buoyant in the fact. And the thing is, it's not an extra game because there are that few games in January anyway. I think it's brilliant for them. Yeah, keeps the pot boiling. Yeah. Plus the fact they're still in the FA Cup, which is the big thing. Maybe they'll play Brentford every 10 days from now on. <laughs> Brentford won, Wolverhampton Wanderers won. A performance to be proud of, Mel Eves, would you say? Oh, absolutely. Very proud, very proud to be... Uh, had to have golden black running through my veins, Daz, as you are. And um, no, fantastic the way they come back. Last half an hour, as I said, the, 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 the performance was summed up by you would have thought Brentford had got the had got a, a, a man fewer, and it was um, it was such an outstanding display. When when Pedro Neto came on, I think it gave a lift to the whole Wolves team. In fact, and uh, they took they took the fight. Then t instead of just concentrating on the counter attack they actually were dominant for the for the last 30 minutes i thought it was an excellent performance and the wolves wolves fans will go away from here really really pleased after at half time feeling feeling the, that they were the victims again of a poor decision mm, sense of injustice there was but Wolves played pretty much the entire match with 10 men and battled back at Brentford to earn a replay 08 081 00 956 Mel Eves and Mike Taylor our commentary team there at Brentford will get dressing room reaction from Gary O'Neill between now and 10